This is a job that I didn't think I was going to be doing when I bought a bunch of carbon parts, but these are pure raw carbon unsealed. Man, this thing's going to look really good once it's all done. Okay, so here's the TA07 with the stock front differential where you can actually rotate your tires at independent speeds. You would think that's a good thing, but on the track it's better to have them fully fixed, locked gear. So anyway, diff is coming out, spool's going in. Servicing this car has been pretty easy so far. It's just these four screws and then you can pull off, just pull forward. Now I can lift my diff right out. Let me get it in the light. Yeah, so just lift, pull it forward and lift it up and out. Something I've just realized about this is that this is a major weight savings too. This is a lot lighter than the diff is with all the gears and fluid and stuff. That's significant. I am probably going to be underweight now after I change and put on a spool and do carbon top deck. All right, we're fully locked now. That's all the play there is. That's it. It'll start to spin the other wheel no matter what or else you snap, break something, but that's rare. The drivetrain on these cars are very strong. I've never broken an axle in any of my on-road cars ever. Usually always break the plastics, the suspension components. Man, this thing's going to look really good once it's all done. I mean, it looks really good now, but after the carbon and stuff gets on, hopefully it doesn't ruin this look. It is a lot more curved right now. The carbon can't curve, so it's all flat. Anyway, we'll see how it looks. I saw pictures of it. I really liked it. All right, well, this is a job that I didn't think I was going to be doing when I bought a bunch of carbon parts, but... These are pure raw carbon unsealed with hard edges. So when you look at the instructions, they mention applying instant cement to all of the edges. That's just CA glue, but I did look up a technique for this and shout out to Competition X, the website, because they have a really good article about how to deal with raw carbon. Now these come stamped out of industrial manufacturing with a very raw edge and they're also unsealed. This is pure natural stacked carbon. It's glued together but the problem with this is that if you get a hard impact on the corner it can splinter off. So what you want to be doing is first step is to wet sand the edges. So I took a nail file and I sanded down the edge. I just want to show you some of my process here. So I, uh, I take a wet q-tip and I go around all the edge This is my technique. I'm just getting the edge wet to keep the dust down and then take my nail file and then just start sanding down the edges. And even with the wet, it's a messy job. Like my hands are, are getting pretty, pretty carboned up. You might want to wear gloves if you do this. I don't know if the carbon is, gets into your bloodstream and causes problems down the road. I don't know. We're mostly made of carbon, so I'm hoping it's okay. <laughs> If you want to make them last forever, this is the way to do it. It's a lot of extra effort though, but that's why it's called a hobby. It's not all just buy it, bolt it on. Some things you have to take a little bit more care and time with to do properly. Wipe it off. You don't have to do much, you're just taking off that really, really sharp edge just to stop it from splintering. That's all you're doing. But gluing it and sanding it is gonna make it much stronger long-term. Let it dry, wipe it off with a towel, as well as the, uh, the sanding does kick up a lot of carbon dust, so that's why you're wet sanding it, is to keep it so that you can just wipe it off and it's not, you're not breathing it in. Then, uh, for cosmetics, Color the edge with a Sharpie, so like a good sh cooking show, here's one that I prepared earlier. This is one that I've been working on. I have just finished coloring the edge on this one, and it makes it quite a bit darker and, and looks nicer. Now, if you want to get artistic with your carbon, you can choose any color Sharpie that you want. I think a lighter color is going to be really hard to show up because even as the natural carbon, it's fairly dark, but uh, you get it a lot darker with once you, once you Sharpie it. So you can see how much lighter the edge is after you sand it. And all you're doing is you're just adding Sharpie to really darken that up or any color of your choosing. So yeah, you're just coloring along the edge and it just makes it look professional and factory when it's done. So you do that around the whole edge. Then once you've got the color and the sanding done, let it all dry 
and then the next step is to actually glue it. There's a technique for that as well. I'm gonna be using my super thin glue and Q-tips, and I have to figure out how I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna use a plastic bag I'm going to put the CA glue into the plastic bag and then dip the Q-tip in it and then seal the edges with the glue. I'm now doing what's likely the most stressful part, which is the gluing. So I'm using my super thin CA glue and I've put a plastic bag in this little split shot glass and I'm using a Q-tip and go around all the edges and seal the edges with glue. So I've just done this one. This one has been glued and it's going to dry and now I have to do all the rest. This is nerve wracking. It also, it's picking up the uh, the Sharpie that I just put on it too. It's already, ooh, this has already started to dry a little bit. Seems like you gotta work fast or else it'll start to glue, will start to harden on your Q-tip. Although the work goes pretty quickly. You get to spots like this and then you're like, what do you do? There's no grab, then there's no place to hold on anymore. You are going to get glue in your fingers, no matter how hard you try. Ah, frick. Ah, and glue it to your finger. Installed. These are the plastic parts that have been removed. And here's the chassis with all the carbon on it. It looks great. So the front cross members are now carbon. That little center piece is now carbon. The rear pieces are now carbon, as well as in addition, we now have this rear center brace, which didn't exist before in plastic at all. So that is a new structural member that does make the chassis quite a bit more rigid, it seems. It reduces flex, so that should be good. Uh, I've also added in my front post support is also a carbon plate up here by the front. And finally, I've shaved down my body posts, although I did a pretty hack job on them. I'm not very impressed with myself for that, but it does look better now than having the big post sticking up. Overall, this is still 20 grams lighter than it was before, even with added parts. Carbon can't bend. It has some riser plates that are made of aluminum, and you get all new hardware with these pieces too. So all the existing screws are still in place on the stock pieces, and you get all new screws with the new stuff. So at this point, I'm going to stop my changes there. I still have... For future videos, I still have all these aluminum suspension blocks, but this will change the geometry of the vehicle. I'm going to try for a wider stance with more toe-in, but you don't want to do too many changes all at once because then you don't know what's good and what's bad. What I've done so far is it's 20 grams lighter and it's going to be stiffer. So I want to see what does that do on the track.